Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is Joe Lee Farms and this is Joe. Um, we've got an exciting uh, interview for you today from our X-Files, Expat Interviews. <laughs> that noise again. Not sure where that's coming from. Hey, but anyway, got a great interview. You're going to enjoy this, this uh, gentleman that we're going to speak with today. So let's get right to it. Welcome back to the channel. This is Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. I'm here with a new friend of mine, Daryl. Daryl, how are you today? I'm doing well, Joe. Thank you. Good. Thanks for being here. So uh, Daryl is a recent transplant to Vilcabamba, Ecuador. Yes. Just got here how long ago now? Two weeks and two days. Two weeks and two days. Yeah, he's dripping new. <laughs> but he's uh, he's settling in well here. So Daryl, um, what in the world possessed you to move to Vilcabamba, Ecuador? The uh, short answer to that is uh, inflation and world events. Ah, okay, cool, yeah. Um, I can expand a little further if you like. Please. Uh, well, so far as in inflation uh, uh, back in the U.S., my, my personal situation is, is that uh, I draw Social Security disability, and I have for 13 years. I have respiratory issues and also an autoimmune disorder. That's why I'm on disability. Um, and with last year's cost of living increase, uh, it bumped me up 27 to, oh, back up a little bit. So I qualified inside of a program in, inside of Medicaid called QI1 that pays for my Part B Medicare premium. And uh, with last year's cost of living increase, it bumped me up $27 over the qualifying limit for that benefit. So it was taken away from me which is a 10% uh, hit off the top to my income. And then you add that to the 20% increase in the cost of living over the last two years, I've taken a 30% hit to my income. Wow. And, uh, you, oh, so that was also the third time in 13 years that that benefit had been taken away. So it's something that I was having to deal with 25% of the time. Yeah. And, uh, so it was at that point I said, I'm going to start looking for a new country to live in. And I, I did hundreds of hours of research on about six different countries and uh, settled on Ecuador. Uh, uh, one, because of, uh, well, the climate here in, in Vilcabamba. Um, Ecuador uses the dollar. Um, the cost of living is about a third of what it is uh, where I'm from. Um, Oh, and uh, uh, the ease of applying and, and qualifying for a residency visa in Ecuador. Very good. And, you know, I think some people, when we talk about um, wonderful countries to live in, there's a lot of wonderful countries to live in. However, some of them have become unattainable for us, you know, myself specifically, and probably for you too, yeah. from a financial standpoint. Um, Portugal was definitely on our hit list, and now we've cer certainly taken it off. Portugal has become unaffordable to us. I mean, we could afford it, but why spend all that money when we got such a great climate right here? And uh, the Portugal visa process is getting a little bit more difficult than what it was. Oh, if I could add one other thing. Uh, one of my concerns was, well, uh, you know, since Ecuador uses the dollar for their local currency, how is uh, in, inflation of the money supply in the U.S. going to affect the dollar here in Ecuador? And uh, I found the answer to that. And the, the answer is, uh, it's not. And the reason is, is because the Central Bank of Ecuador does not have either a printing press uh, or a keyboard where they can print more dollars and inflate the money supply. There's only a fixed number of dollars in Ecuador. Therefore, um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, one thing I do like to add too is that if you take money out of Ecuador, there is an exit fee on that money. So Correct. you have yeah. to be very careful how that transpires. There's ways of doing it. But so um, anyway, so you're, you're here in Ecuador and as long as we're talking about money, I know we went to the bank last week. How's yes. that go? Did that go all right? Uh, it went very smooth. Uh, yeah, and, th and thank you for doing that also, by the way. Um, yes, we, we went to uh, Loja, uh, got me a bank account set up. Uh, we met with Ruben, and uh, uh, the process was uh, relatively quick and simple. 
Um, and uh, there, you know, there, there is electronic banking. You can go online, look at your statements, transfer money. Um, and uh, when I made my initial deposit, rather than uh, waiting in line, uh, what we did was we went to the ATM machine, and uh, which was a quick and easy process. There was no one in line at the ATM. And see, I never thought about that before, making your cash deposit outside at the ATM. That's wonderful. Most of your ATMs, like here in Vilcabamba, the Banco de Loja, you can only use 10s and 20s and 5s. You can't use 50s or 100s. But if you go to the branch in Loja, you can deposit 100s and 50s. and So it makes it real simple to do banking. Yeah. And so Ruben's helped you set up all the online stuff while you were there? Uh, yes, he did. Uh, Ruben was, uh, was most kind and most helpful. Uh, so the first thing we did when opening the account was, uh, you know, of course, Ruben uh, explained the process to me. And, uh, the aliens have invaded. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sorry. Ru Ru Ruben explained the whole process to me and, and uh, what the fees would be. And Okay. okay. Yeah. Good girl. Uh, what the fees would be, um, uh, explained the, the paperwork to me because, of course, the paperwork's in Spanish, and uh, we signed the documents. Then we went uh, downstairs from his office area uh, to where their uh, uh, terminal is uh, inside the bank, and he, uh, yeah, took me, uh, stepped me through the entire process of getting my account set up online, setting up my passwords, um, uh, my pen for my uh, debit card, all, yeah, everything. Set it all up that easy. And he didn't ask you any prying questions into your history or anything like that? No. Yeah. No. No, of course, I mean, you have to show your identification, which, you know, is your passport, which you have to have to be here anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty, pretty simple. So um, what are your first impressions of Ecuador? Uh, so I, after I was here for, for two days, uh, I was talking to one of my buddies back home and he asked me that exact question. And uh, my response was, it's the best decision I've ever made. And, uh, you know, even after uh, uh, two weeks, I, I, I still feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what, what, what you feel like we'll, after a couple of years. We'll <laughs> see after a couple of years, sure. Uh, but, uh, the, the hotel that I stayed in the first, oh, before I came into country, I had all of my ducks in a row, uh, with your help, by the way. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had all of my documents that I need to apply for, uh, my residency visa. Um, you know, I had all my contacts for, um, uh, for my taxi driver to pick me up at uh, the airport in Cotacachi, uh, Jose Abad. Fantastic, man. You um, mean over here in Catamayo. Uh, thank you, yes. Catamayo, I'm, I'm yeah. still... Other end of the country. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. At the, uh, at the airport uh, where I flew in, um, he, w he was there uh, uh, before my plane arrived, waiting for me, um, helped me load my luggage into his taxi. One of the friendliest, uh, kindest people you'll ever meet. And uh, uh, he, he's a kind, generous man. And he, he has been uh, actually gone out of his way to be of help and assistance to me uh, in you know transitioning once I got on the ground, getting all those things that you need to go get. Um, uh, yeah, oh, okay. So where I stayed the first two days was at uh, uh, Hosteria Paraiso, and um, just a fabulous spa and resort. Um, I stayed there two nights, and I'd already made contact with uh, with Aravia um, to help me find a place to live. And uh, at the at the hotel, you know, I was so busy. It it took me two days until I could um, uh, actually have actually have actually have an, an opportunity. Just go around and appreciate the surroundings and, and, and the grounds there. And I had this moment where it came to me where I said, you know, if I had a vision of what a slice of heaven is, 
this is it. That's a pretty cool little place, it, nice spot. Yeah, I had dinner there one night and uh, on the menu it said chicken stew and I thought, oh, that sounds good. And my plate that came out was a gourmet meal. Yeah. And then for dessert, I had uh, fruit with ice cream. And what came out was a you know fairly good sized mug half filled with fruit, three scoops of ice cream is the most delicious ice cream I've ever had. Oh, wow, yeah. It's one, oh, it's $13. Yeah, 13, for everything. Thir for, for everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, being that it's at a hotel, you would expect a little bit of a mark up there. Yeah, and so that's that's really pretty. That pretty is an good. that's an expensive meal in in Vilcabamba. Yeah, yeah. Have you eaten out other places since you've been here? Yes, I have. Uh, I've ate at uh, uh, Mama Sylvia's, mm -hmm. and I've eaten at um, oh, the Indian restaurant uh, Kishore's. Mm -hmm. uh, both places have fabulous food. Um, let's see. Oh, and uh, Charlitos. Yeah. Char Charlito's uh, uh, is kind of an American restaurant, pizza, hamburgers, sandwiches, very good food also. Best burger in town, yeah, definitely, definitely. So um, what are your thoughts about long-term living here? Do you think that this is, you know, a, a place for anyone, or do you think some people are going to find some problems here that are going to be a hindrance to them moving here? Well, sure, uh, there isn't any one place, uh, you know, anywhere on the planet that's going to be the place for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, of course, there's people that, that Vilcabamba or, you know, any city in Ecuador is not going to be their cup of tea. Do you think that uh, there's some negatives about this area in southern Ecuador? Well, uh, if you had to pick one thing. Okay, yeah, you know, uh, people do talk about safety here. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, here's the way, here's the way I see that. Um, first, let me start off with a, a story that I haven't told you about something that happened in Dallas to me one time. And, and this is just, you know, going to um, anything can happen anywhere that you are. So after they put in the, the light rail commuter system in Dallas, one evening I was uh, waiting at a, a, a terminal and it was towards evening time. This was in a, a, a nice area of uh, North Dallas. Um, and uh, I was just sitting on the bench waiting on the train. Uh, I was the only person on the platform. And uh, the next thing I know, someone came up be from behind me, knocked me out cold and robbed me. And the next thing I know, you know, I'm being, you know, the police are there. Getting me up off the ground, my face is all bloody. I mean. You know, my point is, these kind of things can happen wherever you are, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so the advice that I've been given here in Ecuador is really just common sense advice. You know, uh, be aware of your surroundings. Uh, don't be flashy. Like, you know, in the big city, don't go walking down the street with your phone in your hand. Um, you know, secure your belongings. Yeah, you, know, uh, you know, keep your eyes on your stuff at all times. And, uh, you know, don't put yourself in those kind of situations that are going to be a bad place to be in the first place, right? Bingo, yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, fortunately, I don't have much of an issue with that anyway because 8 o'clock's my bedtime. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm 8 o'clock lights out. Uh, I'm not out late at night anyway. Yeah. Um, that's that's but, a good thing, I think. Um, you know, these, these crimes can happen early. You know, in the big cities, the, the pickpocketing is the bad thing. They'll um, sometimes do a, a run and grab where they run by and grab what you got and take off. Other times they pickpocket you, you don't know. They do uh, sometimes what's called scopolamine where they'll blow, um, you know, this toxic substance in your face and you completely forget who you are and where you're at for, for probably about a day. So uh, if they do that, they've got all your stuff. Um, I, I know two people that's happened to in Ecuador, and both of them were in the big city um, when it happened, and neither one of them can account for exactly how it happened. Uh, one of them, actually one of them was right here in 
Bill Kabamba a couple of years back. So, um, you know, when someone comes and invites themselves to your table and wants to sit down with you when you're eating, um, your little radar should be on. And uh, yeah, someone knocks on your door and you look out the window and you don't know who it is, maybe you shouldn't answer the door, um, which is the case I just described in both these cases. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, and just a little bit of common sense, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, uh, going back to in inflation and all that, uh, uh, let me describe the, the place that I found to live and, and, and how our- Yeah, so she and, had you out for how long? Oh gosh, um, I don't know. We were out, you know, three, four hours maybe. Three or four hours. And and we we looked at uh, you know four or five different apartments. You know, uh, what I was looking for was a, I mean it's it's just I'm uh, it's just myself, so I was looking for you know a you know one bed one bath apartment kind of thing, uh, you know somewhere close to the downtown area, and uh, yeah so we uh, and she showed me these those kind of places. And then she showed, also showed me a La Casita, which is a which is a a, a small house, at, and it's very similar in size and layout to a casita that I lived in uh, before I uh, right before I moved here. The, the last ten years in the U.S. I lived in Las Cruces, New Mexico. So uh, where I'm living now is uh, very similar uh, in size and layout to a La Casita that I lived in in Las Cruces. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I have a, a, a fully furnished casita. Um, uh, oh, in, in including all, you know, my pots, pans, uh, kitchenware, um, you know, uh, full-size refrigerator, er everything is fully furnished. Uh, it's bills paid, you know, basically kitchen, bathroom, bedroom, and my rent is two hundred twenty dollars a month. Wow. <laughs> uh, that uh, that that same thing in Las Cruces, my rent was five hundred twenty dollars a month, and my <clears throat> landlord was uh, uh, going to increase the rent to six hundred, wow. and and I told him, well, you know, I I just can't do that. So I was fortunately able uh, uh, I, I, uh, to get into senior housing uh, in Las Cruces uh, and had a one bed, one bath apartment. My rent there was, uh, was 520 a month uh, and that was plus bills. Oh, so my casita here, yeah, it's fully furnished, bills paid $220 a month. Pretty darn good. So there's a lot of people that come here that we refer to as economic refugees. And it's, it's a matter of in the U.S. or in North America, it's just gotten too darn expensive to live a quality lifestyle. And uh, I think that coming here, you can probably already say much higher, higher quality lifestyle. Just by moving to Ecuador, I have uh, 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 in, increased my quality of living. There you go. So I think, you know, again, there's every kind of food here that you can imagine. You can eat very well here. Food is cheap, um, especially if you go to the Mercados and buy your own food and cook it yourself. I mean, a meal would probably cost $2 um, if you did it yourself. And you can get um, Almorezo here, the lunch we've talked about, um, about three fifty at Catherine's restaurant, I think. Yeah. Um, some places it's 4 four fifty. And where you go, um, hamburger Charlitos, a hamburger is four bucks. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, it's I mean that's a great big hamburger for that kind of money. So Charlie puts darn near a half pound of meat on his burger. I keep telling him he puts too much meat on it, <laughs> but uh, you know he said, look, we're making we're making enough money and everybody's happy, so we put a half pound of meat on it. There you so, go. I like his attitude. So this casita he's renting over there, I've never seen it before, even though I'm friends with the family. Um, what a nice, quiet little place. Uh, it is, um, uh, it, it's, it's well down off the main road, uh, uh, behind a gate, uh, very secure area. Um, I, I feel perfectly safe and secure where I'm living. So um, how do you feel about the distance walking to town from where you're at? Oh, I love it. 
uh, I'm a, a, a 10 minute walk from town, which is so great because it gives me an opportunity to get some exercise. There you go. And you pass by a few restaurants on the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. And, and, he, and he's right there at the river where the Sendero, if you watched our Peaceful River Walk video, um, the Sendero's right there. You can walk down the Sendero, uh, make the big U-turn and come back. And so there's not, lots of nice little hiking trails and things around there. I do that every morning. Um, I go down to the river um, and there's a little park bench down there. Sometimes I take a cup of coffee with me and uh, just sit there uh, and, and enjoy the sounds of the river going by and, you know, all the beautiful um, um, trees and, 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 you know, the, the, the growth and I, the air and the clean and the, the air, uh, the food and the water here are clean. Yeah, pretty nice. Um, I think, you know, you've come here at the right time of year because everything's just starting to green up real good and it's just going to get more and more lush as we're, we've come out of the dry season. Uh, exceptionally long dry season and very dry season this year, which is yeah. out of the norm. But we're, we're going to green up fast. Things are coming on. Well, Daryl, glad you're here. We're going to have to come back and revisit with you in two years and see how you feel. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it very much. My, my pleasure being with you today, Joe. Thank you. All right. Well, folks, if you enjoyed this at all, please share it with some friends. Give us a thumbs up. Ciao for now.